I read we were talking about bricks being a different type of, of pizza right here in mm. Chicago. A review I read on Yelp said that bricks was this particular person's favorite un Chicago pizzeria. Yeah, we do you agree or disagree? I agree. We uh, we don't fall into Chicago style because it's not three pounds of cheese and two pounds of dough in a thick pan. Yeah. Um, we're not Neapolitan because we don't cook at a super high temperature on super thin flat dough. Um, but we're not thin crust. New York style thin because it's not a big floppy piece of pizza. It's wheat and it's crispy and it's thin. So it's somewhere in between New York thin, Neapolitan thin, nowhere near Chicago, um, wheat crust. And uh, it's just, you know, it cooks up well in our oven. It's not a brick oven despite the name. It's actually pizza stones inside the oven. And uh, yeah, it's just people always come in and don't really classify the type of pizza it is. Um, yeah, but it's uh, it's it's all from scratch. I mean, our dough is from scratch. Our sauce is a mix of what we like to use. Cheese is uh, a low moisture. Yeah. And um, just it's a hodgepodge of different technology, I guess you could say, pizza technologies. In that realm, maybe it's a, a little more homemade in the thought that when you're making pizza at home, it's kind of, I have an oven. I mean, mm. obviously it's a little more than just, yeah, that thing over there, I cook in it. Yeah. But uh, make it work with what you guys have here, and you guys put out a nice product. Yeah, we like it to have some character. You know, um, you know, pizza doughs, ours, uh, we roll them by hand, we throw them by hand a little bit. Uh, we do the old pizza paddle style where you shake it into the oven with some cornmeal. Yeah. Um, but if we get a bubble, we try to pop it, but we're not trying to make it look perfectly pristine. Like, character's yeah. good. We like... You know, if a pizza's not 100% perfectly round, if it's got a little ding to it or something, we're okay with that. Yeah. You know, the, the basic element is there, and each one's a little different, but it's still a very, uh, um, you know, uh, can't say the word. I'm trying to think of it. No. It's a very continuous product. It's very, uh, uh, I'm going to say standard. It's not the word. It's not no, the word. standard's not the right word, but I'm missing the word, too. But that's okay. It's a very steady product comes out of the, out of the kitchen, and... Uh, yeah, it's just it's a good mix of stuff. There's a lot of prep involved. All the vegetables are fresh. Um, there's a lot of knife work that goes into you know pr- prepping enough like diced red peppers for a weekend, cutting a case yeah. of peppers in like 20 and 30 minutes, and <laughs> having it ready so that you're not uh, behind, so that each pizza gets you know the attention it needs while it's working its way through three different people getting to the getting to the oven. Yeah. Um, uh, let's talk about uh, where bricks began. Um, to my knowledge, because I'm not the original chef, uh, Bill Brandt's the owner. Uh, an original chef of the place, mm-hmm. his food, his recipes. Um, started about 15 years ago, so to what I believe is a, was like a hangout for him and his friends. Yeah. Um, playing around in the kitchen, um, different stuff, soups and different menu items, and pizza seems to be the thing that stuck the most and what got worked on the most and had the most uh, uh, written down recipes for. Repeat customers are always here, and uh, you know the reviews are usually like cool music, funky music, uh, dive bar, um, Small, quaint, date spots. Uh, we also get, uh thought I was going to get mugged walking down the stairs. It's just because it's underground and it's dark at night and you just yeah. see this little neon sign and it's uh, it's off the path, uh, which we think is good for us because we don't need it to be crazy over the top all the time. It's, yeah. People can still come here and get a table after a little wait and, you know, yeah, keeps it neighborhood. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's it, there's maybe a difference in pizzerias between your neighborhood spot and people who mm. are trying to bring in all around you need a little bit more space probably a more diverse menu yeah and i'm sure there are sacrifices both ways yeah and we you know we're just pizza's our thing I mean, we have appetizers that are good and some sandwiches but like pizza is the main the main draw like the the awning outside we always say it doesn't say world's best piece, pizza and pasta yeah our world's best pasta outside it's uh you know world's greatest pizza or still because we replaced the awning yeah it used to say world's best pizza world's greatest pizza <laughs> and we replaced the awning and it says still the world's best pizza what would be the up. third one of that? Um, to be the world's uh, best pizza. Never gonna die. I don't know. I don't know what they. <laughs> I don't know what they'd say at that point. Forever young. Yeah, yeah. it was fifteen year old awning though, so I, we got another fifteen years before we have to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of your pies, uh, Bricks is amazingly known for its unique topping selections mm. and its different taste palettes that it offers. 
Where do you guys uh, get your inspiration for changing up the taste in your different pies? Um, well, all the all the pizzas are their bills, and a lot of it comes down to what Bill really likes yeah. and uh, what he thinks other people will really get a kick out of. Um, so a lot of our stuff, some of our ingredients like pepperonis and sausages and jardiniere, we get from way different spots all over the city. We don't just go to like the local supplier and just grab the ground beef that is there. Like yeah. there's a produce place that we go to that we like, the veal from this place to make our meatballs. And every week we have to run it. We run around hectically getting the stuff. And it's just because that's what we like. That's what, you know, Bill's picked out over the years. And what he really, really enjoys putting on the pizza, what he thinks people are really going to enjoy. Um, it's not a generic stuff. It's nothing like from a, you know, a large corporate monster food kind of place it's literally like a lot of little small mon posh mon posh chicago places that we go yeah. out and get our sausage and our veal and and th and things and as far as specialty pizzas go um you know you just use what's around you i mean a lot of times you know you can make a specialty pizza of what you already have in the kitchen yeah we have a pizza we did last year that was never on the menu in 15 years called the julius peppers named after one of the bears players mm -hmm. and all it was was everything that had the word pepper on it and it became <laughs> real popular it was pepperoni banana peppers roasted red peppers and jalapeno peppers right and uh it caught on really well i did a fox segment on it um and uh, yeah i mean sometimes it's just there in front of you and sometimes you get an idea you can be out like eating a blt sandwich and go I can make a pizza out of this <laughs> or you know like you're eating you're at a, a tailgate and you try a sausage and you're like man that is unbelievable sausage and yeah. you find out where it is and you can throw it on a pizza i mean a pizza is pretty much just an edible plate you know whatever you want to put on it put on it and you can yeah. eat, eat it and there's no dishes <laughs> <laughs> for the most part uh one of the questions i like to ask everybody is what's your philosophy on pizza what are you trying to uh to get out of making pizza having what people are noticing on the pies you're making um i don't know i think pizza is all about you know having it with somebody mm -hmm. um even like a personal pizza's size is really something you could share with somebody um you know you could i don't want to say you can learn a lot about somebody by what they put on their pizza yeah kind of cliche but um you know you go out with somebody for the first time and they put jalapenos all over a pizza and you're not a jalapeno person yeah you start, you know, no second date. No second date, <laughs> or you know, you, you tough it out and you you move on and you get a second date and you yeah. kind of find stuff out about them. But um, you know, ingredients are as unique as the people eating it. I would say. I mean, you can have people coming in and they can destroy a specialty pizza. Like you know, I want a painful, but I don't want these three ingredients that come on your painful, and I want to substitute them. Yeah, that's fine. It's it's all about what you want. Um, I think pizza is a good medium where, you know, if somebody has a special request, it's it doesn't destroy the kitchen. It's not something you can't handle because it's right. literally not this at this and these are the things we have or if you go to some you know if you order a steak medium and you get it medium well your steak's probably ruined yeah if you go to a pizza place and you say no gouda at feta it's, it's gonna happen 100 <laughs> percent of the time you're gonna get the correction you want and you're gonna get yeah. it the way you want uh so let's talk about the pope's head very okay. briefly <laughs> a staple of bricks right what is the uh, meaning behind the Pope's head, or is there a story behind um, it? To my knowledge, I believe the owner, Bill, got it in Germany. Whether it was given to him or he got it, I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, uh, the running joke with the Pope's head is uh, uh, he blesses the pizza. Yep. I don't know if there's any truth to that. I've never <laughs> seen anybody pray inside of Rick's. Um, but uh, I guess jokingly also, there's the uh, find the Pope's face in the pizza contest that's on running. You, uh, if, you, if you find the Pope's face in your pizza, then... You know, you should let us know. I don't know what the prize is, or if there's a prize, or uh, or what's really behind it. But uh, it's it's just Something always been there. For. People always identify it. They recognize it. They see it online. And they go bricks. You know, it's it's just always been hanging up, staring at everybody, giving everybody the eye eyes. Yeah. I don't think it's ever it's never glown. You know, like the eyes have never gleared or anything. <laughs> but uh, it's always been there. And pretty much anybody who's new to the place always asks what what's up with it at yeah. some point in time. Well, how about uh, for the future of Bricks? Looking forward, what are, what do you anticipate? Things you guys are coming out with? Some new ideas? Uh, we do. We have a couple. Do we, we're opening a new location, Big Bricks. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot larger capacity. There's an upstairs and a downstairs. Uh, more ovens, uh, more space, more beer, more beers on draft, more beers on bottle. Yeah. Uh, should keep the same vibe. Uh, doesn't open for probably a couple more months. And uh, we're also going to be doing uh, barbecue there. We're going to Brix is going to try to tackle barbecue. We got a big smoker. I start smoking some meats. Um, start smoking some of the meats that we already use on the menu here. Uh, smoking them ourselves. That's awesome. Uh, I was trying to do more stuff in house. Yeah. And um, 
it's always a process, and uh, we think it'll turn out pretty good if we can if we can do what we're already doing a little bit better, and the customers agree. Mm -hmm. then you, you do it. You know, yeah. if you can up it up a little, if you can knock it up a little bit, then you should do it. Yeah, and, absolutely. Um, a lot more space. Anybody who's ever come here before, you know, you'll definitely have a little more elbow room at the new spot. <laughs> Higher ceilings. You won't have to hit your head, you know, with the pipes and all the stuff that runs through uh, traditional bricks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>